Hey people, welcome to the channel, and in this case, talking about what is arguably the most versatile gun you can have, the 22 long rifle carbine. Uh, I was just reminded about this uh, while I was cleaning the one you see there on top, that's the Marlin Papoose um, stainless steel takedown model. That is the, like the sheath that it comes with. It's a little uh, case, a little soft case. I believe it actually floats in water, so it's like intended for uh, boats and these uh, uh, you know, small airplanes in case you end up in some lake or something. So yeah, very survival-esque like, but mostly just a very versatile gun, you know? Um, I've done videos in the past about this, but I was just thinking, taking my kids shooting and so, and yeah, I have some uh, younger one, teenager, adult, and in, and small and, and, and little dude. But whenever you bring a new shooter, the 22 is the way to go. There's no discussion there. I've done videos in the past talking about what's more convenient, like the uh, a 22 long rifle or, or, a, or a shotgun in terms of ease of, um, of purchasing, uh, legal aspects in different countries. It usually tends to be that 22s and shotguns, they tend to be quite a lot less restricted in countries that have uh, issues with these things. Um, but when it comes down to how versatile it is, I think that the 22 long rifle is just um, the, the 22 uh, carbine specifically. You know, given how accurate it is, given how that extra little bit of barrel length gives you a little bit more velocity, so you're squeezing even more performance out of what's the one of the oldest, if not the oldest, round there is in the world. Right? This little thing has been. Um, perfected over the years just to get the maximum amount of, of, of capability out of it. And sometimes people underestimate at their own risk, underestimating what you can do with 22. That is uh, something that you w don't want to do. But what is that it cannot do? In terms of self-defense, right? In terms of what we often end up talking about here, in terms of self-defense, statistically speaking, if you look at one shot stops, center mass, I mean, there's really very little difference between a 22 and a nine and a nine millimeter. People will sometimes be surprised by that, but the numbers don't lie. If you get one of these in the chest, you will be you you will have something serious to worry about. Okay, it's not gonna be a, a walk in the park. So you're not only looking at what is the most useful in terms of pest control, small game hunting, anything where you have mac where, where you want to get maximum versatility. 22 just you know, just does it. Uh, these days, another aspect is how expensive ammo is. You know, if you just go shooting 22, well, that's a lot cheaper than pretty much anything else. Um, uh, for what I was just explaining for new shooters, right? S teaching someone how to shoot. You want to go with a 22. That is basically how it goes. There's a good reason for that. The recoil and the the um, the, the muzzle blast, all of that is minimal, especially in, again, in carbine form. The carbine also makes it a little bit safer, so as to not have, you know, someone that is not experienced pointing towards themselves accidentally and so on. So all of those things, uh, it just makes it so handy. And about underestimating it in terms of, of its self-defense use, so many people have used so much, so many times, 22 successfully to defend themselves. We, you know, it, it's, it's done its job more than enough. You know, this is more than enough. And not only price, but how compact it is. 50 rounds right here. Try that with pretty much anything else. Yeah, man, it is, you need a, you need a couple. You need a few of these because they're so, so nice to have. Um, for planking, for having fun, for practicing. Right, uh, these things. I started shooting with a 22. It, I don't know if it was a Remington or a Winchester, something very old. It was one of these old gallery guns that you had like a, a single shot bolt action. That thing was indestructible. That thing would have would never die. But it was a single shot, so each shot, and I had a lot of fun with that thing. That's the first gun I think I started shooting with. So you would open it up, put a little round in there, close the vault, boom, <laughs> open again. It was. Yeah, it took forever, but it forced you to just take your time. It forced you to think. Maybe there is where you have a little bit of a, okay, which one is it? Is it like that nice um, Winchester 9422 that you see there? That one is capable of firing a long rifle, long and short. Um, and yeah, the action is beautiful, it's super accurate. And you have to work the lever each time, you know, each time you work the lever. So you have that big magazine capacity, I think it's like 14, 15 rounds that fit in that tube. So very nice there. This is one of those heirloom guns. I got that one for my oldest son. Um, 
it is just a beautiful, uh, it's just a, a beautiful piece. That's something that will stay with you forever if you take care of it. And again, versatile, super useful, right? Can, what is it that you cannot do with one of these lever action uh, little 22 carbines? Nothing. It's just amazing on that. The one in the middle, that's a, a Taurus um, 22 Magnum. Yeah, I should have gone with the with, with the long rifle as well. I, I want to get a Magnum so as to see about that a little bit more punching power there. Ammunition is still quite compact, even though not as affordable. It's quite a bit more expensive, 22 Magnum. Has a lot more power though. So if you want something like intermediate between center fire and you know, it's a lot closer to a 38 Special in terms of, a, of the energy. Uh, and still a very compact gun. This is actually also a takedown mod. It has a, um, a little a screw on the side you can remove by hand uh, and it breaks down quite nicely. So yes, maybe the most useful, most versatile of them all is going to be the one on top, semi-automatic. That allows you to put a little bit more you know, speed when you need it. So it, especially if you're going to look at this in terms of maybe something for self-defense, Right? Oh, but it's not ideal. Well, it's still it's still a semi-automatic gun, right? It's still a 22 long rifle, semi-automatic, which can do a lot of, of protection if needed, reaching with a, a, a good amount of, of distance even further than, yeah, you know, so many times talking about how great these things are, but 100 yards? This, you better have slugs. I mean, yeah, sure, with buckshot, that's another story, and slugs will definitely get you there, but not nearly as much as a... Uh, as a 22, not with that accuracy either, 100 yards and beyond. And I mean, I'm not even talking about having a scope in that thing. If you have a good scope, you could go for 200, 300, easy, no problem. As long as you do your job, the gun will deliver. So it is a, an extremely, the effective range of this thing, it, of a 22 in the box, it says you have to be careful up to two miles. <laughs> and they're not exaggerating. Well, it says caution. Uh, Let's actually get that correct caution. Dangers within 1.5 miles. <laughs> yeah. So yes, range, accuracy, uh, super versatile. I love these things. And I was just reminded by this. So folks, if you're thinking of, of getting something uh, and within the options that you have between shotguns and, uh, and armed carbines, you know, if it's specifically something for self-defense, I will usually gravitate towards a semi-automatic shotgun. That is a showstopper. Now, if you want to have a general do-everything gun, and I mean everything you can think of in terms of, this is the way to go. This is no doubt the way to go. You're going to be shooting a lot more, a lot cheaper, a lot lighter, a lot less recoil and muzzle flash, and new shooters will welcome it, and yeah, all good things. Remember that none of this matters if you don't have the training, and if you cannot afford the training or it's not available where you are, that book specifically, Street Survival Skills, will give you the knowledge that you will learn, that you would have learned in... Uh, beginners uh, defensive shooting classes, right? The the classes that you'd say, and there's a little bit that I threw in there about a little bit more advanced stuff that you may want to keep in mind and maybe practice every once in a while. But for this sort of thing, this is the one I recommend. You also see surviving the economic collapse based on my experience of going through just that in Argentina and something that is very much happening all over the world these days as the middle class sinks into lower and lower levels. But for this sort of stuff in for people that cannot afford the training or just don't have uh, that available in their countries for a reason or another, this is what you want to get. The, the techniques, the little tricks that we learn, the things that you're taught in terms of, uh, of dealing with, with malfunctions, you know, in, any stoppage that you have, failure to feed, how you use your firearm. I mean, uh, uh, so many things that have been learned over the years and techniques and so on that again you learn this in classes some of it a little bit more advanced like moving indoors and so on um, but yeah this is my contribution to um, to the the preparedness world that's that's what I do and that's why I always recommend it in my content guys that's gonna be all for now see you on the next video have an awesome day take care